Oh, hey, how's it going? We're sitting here rocking out, but maybe I should pay attention. How are you? Good. It's raining cats and dogs, so we thought instead of going out and getting out in the rain again today, we would do a year-end gratitude shop tour. So I think first and foremost, um, I'm really proud of what we've built here at Icon, and I'm proud of the whole team that I have here helping me achieve all of my crazy dreams and ideas. But the reality is, even as interested and passionate and as creative as we all are to do what we do, we couldn't do it without you. And no, I'm not just speaking to you as in the person who's blowing the money on what we do. It's really about community. If you're as passionate as we are about it, what it is that we do, you're sharing it. You're telling story. You're telling people about our builds. And hey, once in a while, they buy one. They commission a build. And this is great. And, then, and to me, it's about community and it's not about like sales. That's why you don't see us do ad campaigns. We haven't done print ads in 15 years. We just want to spread the story so that people understand what it is we're all about. And, and thank you for helping us do that. So uh, we're getting ready to close down for Christmas, but take you through the shop and uh, show you some of the latest and greatest. This not being latest, this is, uh, if you haven't seen it before, this is the very first derelict, like the one that started it all. It's actually a 52 Chrysler Town and Country wagon, even though it says DeSoto, but the, the Chrysler front clip is pretty darn ugly so when i found the wagon the chrysler interiors are super cool despite the uglier front clip and my old radiator shop in north hollywood had the same color desoto rotting in their parking lot i bought it off then brought it back bolted the front sheet metal onto the back and the idea was born so i pretty much built that nights and weekends on my own and then it wasn't until it was done and it started winning awards and getting a lot of love that we realized it's still icon. It's still the same DNA of classic design revisited in a modern context, just different. So that was nice and organic. Check out our new paint board. We've got all these cabinets full of paint samples and it's getting kind of messy. So this is uh, something new that we're stoked to have and gonna really start working with this year. So we're converting to metal cars and then 3D printing inserts of the index nicely. But we're gonna keep growing this array. This was built uh, Jacobson Woodwork. The guy's work is just phenomenal. J-C-O-B-S-E-N. He did this as a gift to the shop and really, really appreciate it. And then Pedro's behind the camera started growing our little fun Polaroid collection. So like pretty much every time we're at a shoot, although he hasn't shown up with a Polaroid, just saying the last couple of shoots, we're gonna start building out the array on the board. Uh, we now have a dedicated office up front for colors and materials, but right now it's dedicated to, well, Christmas presents for everyone. So we'll show you that another time. Our little Christmas tree. Ploy of the month, we've been doing that for many years. And then let's get into the meat of it, shall we? All right, so now we're in the main shop and it's been a while since I've had you guys in the shop. So we've rejiggered and evolved. You know, we spent a lot of time this year evolving the process of what we do. Now, you know, everything's in cab, the designs are all locked down. So obviously colors and materials and customization is a big part of it. But more importantly as a business, it's also, or not more importantly, but equally important, is consistency, repeatability, and efficiency, because it is a business. So we have really great software that we actually had to develop ourselves. That was a hemorrhage. So we also do these analog boards. So we know where every project is at every stage, who's responsible, how it's doing on its schedule and time log. If it's not under the roof here at Icon, where is it? How long will it be there? What are they doing, etc. We've done some reorganization. We really like these lev racks. Um, nice guys, American company, really good, efficient use of space for us. In fact, I want to add some more of these in the house, but basically we're able, kind of like a lawyer's uh, 
file cabinet or doctor's file cabinet, but for shop equipment and stuff, and it works out really good. So here we've got a white FJ44. This one is pretty much done. We're gonna start rolling it here pretty soon. It's got the rear amp step, which is kind of cool. It's the uh, quartz white, it's new school, jump seat, CD for six, really well equipped truck. We just shot the video and got this one nice and muddy yesterday. Came out really nice. It's this cool Azura blue and Wimbledon white. Again, it's an old school. So generally the Broncos populate this line, the FJs populate that line until you get to the back corner of the shop. And then that's where we're building the rolling chassis assemblies. So those are done by the same team all together in chorus. This one we haven't shot yet, but it's really an exceptional old school build. Uh, we did this tritone inspired by the original kind of tape package, but we did it in paint under the clear. And then the interior on this one is just completely nuts. Uh, this is all hand dyed. Um, it's actually Hermes shoe leather. So it's known as uh, chrome crust. So then um, we come in and we use an alcohol based dye system to, to create all this contouring and shadowing. So the, the hand, the touch, the smell is just phenomenal. But as you can see by all the textures and variations in the seats and the dash pad and the steering wheel, it just immediately is rich, rich, rich with character. We did a really cool hand stitch on these two to sort of complement that style. Um, this truck's really an exceptional one. So you will be hearing more about it soon. Um, moving down the line, uh, you know, as I've mentioned a couple times recently, blue, 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 leg beat. And I'm down with that because there's so many different blues and I love blue. So there's two blues. Well, here's yet another blue. So this one is obviously a derelict. It's the original paint. The body is phenomenal. Um, and you know, with the derelicts, I think a lot of times people think we just leave the body alone and party on. But in reality, what we're doing is we're protecting the original exterior paint finish and patina, but the underside of the body, as well as the inside floor in its entirety, that all gets silica or media blasted to raw metal, then primed, 3M caulked, sealed, and then the heat cured polyurea and on and on and on. So actually, while we save a little money not dealing with a body shop and chrome and stuff, uh, we spend a lot more time in labor because it just takes forever to make it look like we did nothing. And then we have fun with things like, you know, the, the new roll bar, salt patina painted so that it blends in and doesn't jump the shark. Same with the dash assembly. So that's our new dash, but it's all patina painted to weather. It's another blue one. You can see the doors down there. Then here's the tailgate. There's the hood. So that one's still the main body's in the oven coming up soon. Here we have a BR chassis. So this is fresh out of the crate from Art Morrison. I'll show you a bunch more of them. So the first thing we do, their welds are gorgeous, but we take the extra time, put a nice soft baby butt curve on all these cut sheared edges. Uh, if you don't do that when you powder coat, the powder will actually run away from the end and you'll end up with really thin coating and then it's just kind of an opportunity for corrosion. We don't um, grind their welds though, because look at, I mean, they're just art. Why screw with them? They're super sexy as they are. So here we've got a couple more. We're at the moment, this is a Bronco station. So these are three Bronco rollers coming together. So here's an old school, here's a new school, and there's another old school. That one, the wheels are a giveaway. That's gonna go with the kind of aqua blue patina body. And heck if I know what that one goes to, but we'll figure it out. Then over here, we're going through the somewhat painful, but rewarding in the end effort of doing a optional removable hard top on one of our FJ40s. So we use a combination of original panels as well as a couple replacement new aftermarket panels that have actually gotten a lot better in the last year but takes forever. Here's our one-off sort of prototyping machine shop. Nothing fancy. I mean our CAD CAM HD plasma tables, the I mean that and our kick-ass Kaiser compressor system. 
He's the only state-of-the-art stuff. Otherwise, I mean, we've got a Rotex and English wheels and Mini Max and wet saw, cold saw, shears, but it's decidedly low tech because we're really only gonna use this on the one-off aspects for like the derelicts and the reformers or for prototyping new parts. But once they're done here, they're really done just to confirm. Then we'll lock them down in CAD and go to our usual supplier network, mostly aerospace. So I'll take you through parts and show you that. But anyway, that's the main hall for Bronco and FJ. And then recently, since we moved TLC back to North Carolina, gave us a lot more room here. Oh, before we get into that, check out this color. This Bronco is so cool. A really interesting color. Kind of like a pond scum green. I'm sure there's a more poetic name for it, but I'm digging it. So this one is out of the booth. The paint is cured. The floors, as I had mentioned, well, in the case of uh, new school and old school, we actually powder coat the whole body prior to paint and then Semsil, then Dynamat, Dynapad, Extreme Liner, then we'll polyurea on top of that and under that, and then it'll be ready for final assembly. But I digress. Back to this is now, since TLC is relocated, all this space is dedicated for the TRs of the Thrift Masters, which is our 47 to 53 Chevy truck. So this four-wheel independent, our sport chassis, is so good that we pretty much have, yeah, we have not built one with our standard chassis since launching this chassis. The handling, the ride quality, like the dynamics are just so incredible. If you're already this deep in the pond, you might as well be doing the sport chassis. The chassis cost difference and body mods resulting, it's probably like 25 grand more to do it. Bitch and Derelict 53 Riftmaster. This one's actually for sale right now. And then here's the next one. I forget what number this is in production. Lovely dark green. This is coming together now. Ditto on the process. So original bodies, not reproduction. Media blasted to raw metal. Then the principal body work, heat related body work is done. Then powder coat, then seam seal, then conventional fillers and paints and yada, 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 then the polyurea. So this one's finally in its final assembly. So mill spec one, epoxy primed and black powder coated chassis with four wheel independent, Dana 60, hydro boosted Brembo's, our own proprietary tank with in tank, sump, filter, baffles, rollover valve. And then right now, He's building out, getting the harness all stuff, starting with final assembly and some paint detail work while we're terminating the headliner. Behind you is the body, bed, and door assemblies kind of in pieces getting Lego together. That's kind of a neat, uh, there's a couple of cool little trinkets we're looking at. So like door panels, I hate, any of y'all have built vintage cars, hate door panel retainer clips. They're the little metal coat hanger buggers that suck or the little plastic buggers that suck, but no matter what, they suck. So we have a nice big commercial laser. And what we've done is we've designed two pieces that we cut in marine board, and then we inset an epoxy in really nice rare earth magnets. So when this panel goes onto the vehicle, it's simply magnets that index it and hold it in place. And then things like our armrest, which is sexy as all hell. Look at that, it's all billet and chromed. And then the leather hand wrap. This will sandwich upon here. And then that'll go through holes we punch here. And then with the window regulator and the door handle, that panel's solid. But if you ever have to take it off, it's not a pain in your ass to take it off. It's actually serviceable. The running boards are gonna get scratched immediately. So we always do a 3Ms for the clear bra process on those. Here the doors are getting Lego together, which means we take the painted shells, the powder coated lower trim rail, all new glass, all new trim, all new rubber, dynamat line the inside, install the power window mechanisms, and basically bench build the whole door so when it goes on the vehicle to reduce risk of damage, it's already ready to rock and fully assembled, and you just plug it in and party on. Let's see, let's see, within, uh, yep, there's more of those love racks I was telling you about. Derelict department's kind of suspiciously empty right now, but it's for a reason. The 
Suburban that we finished this year uh, is all for final cut and polish and then it's being delivered to the client at the turn of the year. The Superbird is uh, still out of state at Speed Corps and coming back to us around the time of the uh, Roadster show. And then C20 built on a new Chevy truck. We're in electronics phase for R&D on that. And then this table is kind of fun to talk about. So this is, this is the little stuff that'll have a big impact in the final product, which is a 75 Jeep Cherokee. But we're kind of playing as we like to play. Revision is history. So like the graphic wasn't even of the Cherokee tribe. It was just whatever the old white dude in Detroit decided to do in the 70s. The interiors were kind of cheesy, dielectric stamp vinyl and on and on and on. And then like the front, clip i always like that kaiser 60s version front clip they often call them like the rhino nose and then i also like the later model pickup truck jeep flares on the fenders and bedsides so we're redesigning pretty much every single bit of trim starting at the nose so we took a kaiser nose we laser scanned the original 10 grill we prototype machined it in this Delrin to then execute it in 6061 billet, one piece in chrome. Most people won't notice. I will, you probably will. And if you walk up to it, like it's not messing around. Same with all the trim for the floor spears. We continued that design language so it extends further in the vehicle. And those are all solid steel now. Uh, the armrests, have a really cool, subtle underlight glow in them to light up both the door at night and the floor when the door is ajar. Um, machined uh, assembly that hides the fuel door behind the driver's side tail light just to keep the body more fluid. Here's some of the old leftover crude 3D prints we did for some of the interior trim. And then these are off now getting enamel infill and we'll add the thematic colors throughout the vehicle into that. Same with like the front badges. We lifted the sort of font style of Jeep, turned it into icon. We changed the displacement to 392 because we put a 6.4 Hemi in it. And then there's this cool reoccurring aesthetic principle or, or element, which is uh, a graphic from the original tribes, when uh, a member of the tribe was going out on a perilous journey, the like clay water vessel and the blanket to be given, a reoccurring design theme would be kind of an abstract based on an eagle feather. So we picked up on that to replace the graphic. Then we repeat it throughout the vehicle in ways subtle and some not so subtle. But for example, this all would have been plastic from the factory this becomes another tiered layer and then it gets staged. So this is uh, lasered onto a mirror polished stainless. This is one of the tweeter housings for the full call speakers, which will kind of disappear under dash. The original steering wheel, the diameter was inappropriate for our modern ratio, but we laser scanned it and then machined it, had it cut out of one piece of billet. Same with the redesign for the horn ring, and then the horn buttons, enamel reverse infill, and it's pretty damn sexy. Every dash knob, every switch, even in the front, the factory sort of block off plates, they made no sense. They were kind of like for another set of headlights, but there wasn't another set of headlights, and they were solid. So we turned them into the cold air intake and again machined them. And then other bright work pieces, um, that arrow aesthetic even like the coat hooks and the rear quarter vent windows uh, have that reoccurring throughout them so all of them's their goodies are going to be applied to that their pretty truck so it's pretty much the whole truck is a deep dark burgundy this shock Porsche gray and black and you can see down the side of the vehicle again the eager eagle feather graphic motif and it does a full photo inverse negative so it starts like that and then as you come to the front of the vehicle it totally fades 
to black. And then again, you'll have the icon badge reflecting the Hemi displacement, and that'll pick up the burgundy, the black, and the chalk color. Uh, six four Craig Hemi HGM tranny controller Compu Shift uh, intake cold air integrated highly modified front fender. Uh, we just are finishing up the electrical system on this one, so um, as with all our vehicles, we're geeking out on every little detail. So a lot of those Deutsche Tech multi thing connectors that we pretty much run on everything, uh, busman panels, high voltage junction blocks. We redesigned the rear view mirror, the handles, and the dash. We added in dash AC, which is inspired by the original grill. Well, not original, but the Kaiser grill that we're running. So those are machined in aluminum, and then we paint them so they go bye bye. Originally, there would have been two factory idiot lights here. We added two more. So now we're supporting parking brake, check engine light, four wheel high and four wheel low indication. Doing a one-off console that'll be integrated into modified versions of the stock C. A ton of the high-end Focal Elite Utopia audio components that are built into sub-compartments, including the base, so they'll never interfere with the vehicle. If you look up, you'll see extensive soundproofing and dead air products put up into the headliner and then uh, one-off dome lights. We did two, so the back side's lit even better. Can't wait to show off all the details. I mean, Hantel leather interior using saddle leather from Wicked and Craig, and like just tons of craziness, and it's gonna be really cool. Then this last and only bay section is for service for existing clients or for recon for clients that send their vehicle back to us to resell. So here we're prepping a couple uh, I think that both these clients are keep them. They're just here for service. That's pretty much it in this uh, main building. I'll take you over to the other newer building too, and uh, come along, we'll take it. Oh, before we go to the other building, this is kind of cool. I haven't seen this truck in years. This is one of the first 10 icons ever built. So this one belonged to David Letterman for many years. He has a bunch of icons and he sold it to a friend of his. But it's kind of neat to remind ourselves how far we've come. Truck's super cool. He's had tons of fun and adventures with it, but there's just a gazillion improvements and changes that we've made over the years. But it's it's nice. All these years later, it comes back, and uh, we're we're all still proud of it. And it's nice to see, it, especially for some of the newer members on the team that weren't here back in the day, then they get a deeper understanding of the evolution and how much stuff has changed. All right, let's head back over to the new building. All right, so COVID obviously rocked everyone's world. You know, one significant thing that impacted us, I mean, many impacts of note was that, you know, we used to be proud of our JIT or just in time manner of inventorying parts and staying lean and mean. Unfortunately, turned into JIC, just in case. So, we had to take over more real estate, more overhead. We had to multiply our standard inventory levels times five to make sure we never stop the production line because nothing sucks worse than stopping the line. So now we make sure we are well stocked and ready to rock. So really when a client orders a truck, first deposit comes in, we immediately fulfill the purchase order to replenish what's already here. So now you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chassis ready to rock, plus all the ones already in production, as well as probably seven FJ bodies. And the Bronco bodies are actually stored elsewhere. We have a separate facility. I'll give you a tour of one day up in Northern California, actually outside of Sacramento. So parts procurement team offices, and then our laser. We sold our CNC. I miss my CNCs, but Honestly, Southern Cal just became a pain in the butt to try and keep it staffed. JPL kept stealing my machinists again and again and again. And until we're really selling parts, like as a focus thing, I mean, you know, we sell parts, but we don't have like a dedicated team to do so. This doesn't make sense because literally you better be keeping that machine running like almost 24 seven. That's Frank speaking of machines that run 24 seven. Frank's been with us for years and keeps the wheels greased. But anyway, this is parts, so 
you know, we have a whole staging area over here. So when the configuration is set, the client presses go, it's queuing up to start production. We know that all the parts are here. The pull ticket is printed. Then we come out and we stage bin, mark it with the client name, project number, and phase of build. So then it's staged here, double check. Then by the time it goes out onto the pallet racks on the floor, it's in order of assembly and in order of station and everyone knows where everything is and when they're going to need it and it's it, it all just coalesces really nice you know a big thing with icon since inception was to try and get the old hot rod shop resto shop out of the stone age and obviously embracing newer technologies and, and cad and stuff like that was critical but also was partnerships uh, and manufacturing and since i now i guess proudly have absolutely no degrees or direct authorization to do what it is i do i've learned this kind of my secret sauce is not knowing any better to do things other people don't do it just seems logical to me so one of those is diving into aerospace marine rail car architecture for supply because a lot of times automotive is just so commoditized it's just garbage and you can do better so these are heat shields for the bronco transmission tunnels those are done for us by a regional aerospace supplier and then this whole section from bumpers to air cleaner assemblies to inner fenders to the tiniest little widget and gidget and bracket and gizmo these are all done mostly by aerospace suppliers in this area of the country and you know we we got to order 50 at a time or whatever but the quality is going to be better than we can really do consistently and repeatedly and cost wise that would i'd be able to build a third of the vehicles that we're able to build a year if we were hand making every time every one of those things so that's probably enough uh then we have textiles and leather storage we have the engineering loft and offices upstairs we have a bunch of project cars most of which I'm not allowed to show you. So happy holidays. Thanks for checking in. We've had such a fun year. We've been honored to have the opportunity to build all the crazy projects. You know, as I said, you know, what have we learned this year? Efficiency, production, uh, still struggling to build the team and hire more people. We're still down a few. I could use about 10 more skilled sets of crafts hands in house. Um, we're starting to manufacture more and more of our components as we notice the quality in the industry seems to be sliding a little bit They're probably covid related challenges we're seeing old school really trending a lot lately um, across the board with the uh, thrift masters the fjs and the broncos oh another cool thing next year we're going to be building the first fj40 in derelict style so it's for the original owner too so every bump and bruise has a trail story and a memory with him and his family so really looking forward to building that and uh, i hope you guys stay well and up your creative game as we enter the next year 2024 get out there get making tell you getting your hands and your brain connected getting off your butt it's good for the brain so be well take care of our planet take care of the ones you love and the ones you don't know you love and uh, we'll see you flip of the year be well